resurrected. And he's not in the grave no more. That's why we say. today church gone are the chains that were holding me gone is a person I used to I'm free from the sin mm. I said I'm free from the sin and the fear and the shame and the guilt oh it's gone cause he rose again Last time right here, say gone. Gone are the chains that were holding me. Gone is the person I used to be. Freed from the fear by your perfect love. This is my exit, this is my exit. Praise the Lord. This is our exodus that 2,000 years ago, Jesus went to the cross. His body was broken and his blood was shed. He died so that you and I could have the freedom and the liberty we enjoy spiritually. That's good news this morning, amen? Come on, let's just thank the Lord for that one more time. Father, we thank you that you went to the cross and your body was broken and your blood was shed for us. And in this moment, God, as we celebrate the resurrection of our Savior, we are reminded of all that you did on the cross for our sake. And this morning, Father, we thank you that freedom looks good on us. And so we try it on this morning in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen and amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. On behalf of my beautiful wife, Wendy, and our entire leadership team here at Converge, we'd like to say welcome to Easter at Converge. This is the part of the service where we like to, to celebrate the Lord's table together and and take communion together. Uh, when you came in, you should have received some elements, and it's our tradition here on Easter Sunday, as we celebrate the resurrection of our Savior, to also celebrate 
communion. Uh, the usher should have uh, some elements for you, uh, and I need, I need one. Thank you, Miss Andrea. Praise the Lord. If you did not receive elements on your way in, and you would like to participate in communion at this time, just slip up your hand. Uh, the ushers are in the aisles. They'll get some elements to you. The scripture declares that on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and said, this is my body, which is broken for you. And as often as you eat this bread, this emblem, you do so in remembrance of me as a symbol of my body that was broken for you. Father, we thank you for this emblem, this symbol of your broken body. We thank you, Lord, for the great price you paid on the cross for our redemption, for our freedom, so that we could have a relationship with our Heavenly Father. We thank you, Lord, for the price you paid, the sacrifice you made on our behalf 2,000 years ago. Lord, we thank you that this bread is blessed to our bodies and our lives to your service. In Jesus' name, take now and eat. And the scriptures remind us in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 that on the same night that Jesus was betrayed, he also took the cup and he said, this is my blood which is shed for you. And as often as you drink of this cup, you do so in remembrance of me. Lord, we thank you for this symbol, this emblem of your shed blood. Father, we are reminded of what your word says that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission, there is no forgiveness of sins. Lord, we thank you that your blood was shed 2,000 years ago so that we could be forgiven of all of our mistakes, of all of our missteps, and so that we could have communion and fellowship with you. This morning, we're grateful, God, for your great love that you demonstrated toward us in that while we were yet sinners, not when we got our act together, but when we were at our worst, then Jesus, you came and you gave your best. We thank you now for this blood, this symbol of your blood. We thank you that it's blessed to our bodies and our lives to your service. In Jesus' name, amen. Take now and drink together. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. And we thank you, Lord, that 2,000 years ago, not only did you die for our sins, but three days later, you rose triumphantly from the grave. And so today, we celebrate and we declare the victory that we have because of what you did. That 2,000 years later, we can still declare that death has been defeated. Let's continue together in worship. I searched the world, but it couldn't fill me. A man's empty praise. Treasures I fail, I never know. Then you came along and put me back together. And every desire is now satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's Nothing 
is the God of the valley. Oh, and there's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me again.
in the silence you're there and in the joy you're there. And Father God, we are so grateful and thankful to be celebrating your son, Jesus Christ today. Because there is nothing better than you, Jesus. And in all God's people said, amen and amen. Thank you, Converge Worship. <laughs> Happy Resurrection Sunday, Converge Church. Happy Resurrection Sunday. He is risen, just as he said. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. He is true to his word, and that is good news for us today. Thank you, guys. I am so happy to see each of you guys. I just want to take a few minutes to welcome you to Converge Live, our in-person Sunday worship experience. I am so glad to see all of you smiling faces out there. If you guys would, please just take a few seconds with me to also welcome Converge Nation, our online virtual family that has been joining us via rebroadcast. I see a couple of Converge Nation right there on the second row. So it's always wonderful when they come and join us in person. Again, thank you guys for joining us. And if this is your first time here at Converge, we want to welcome you as well. Thank you for choosing to be here today. We do not take that lightly. To celebrate your first time with us, we ask that you would please stop by the Welcome Center at the end of the worship service. We do have a gift for you. It's a token of appreciation and just our way of saying thank you for being here today. Amen. Amen. Converge, there are a few things that we want to make you aware of. And so the best way to stay connected on everything that God is doing in and through Converge is to connect with us on our various social media platforms. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at We Are Converge. And we are happy to share that Converge Church is now on TikTok. So you can find us on TikTok at Converge Church. Go and find us on all those various pages, like them, share them. We've got some great content and it's the, just a good way to stay connected on everything that we have going on here at Converge. If you have been with us for a while, you also know that we have some great Converge merch. You're not seeing that today because we are in our Easter best, our Resurrection Sunday best, but we are happy to share that the Converge Church Blackout Collection is here and it is available in limited quantities for purchase. You can stop by the merch table at the end of the service for that, or you can check us out and see what we have to offer on our e-store at weareconverge, no, at store.weareconverge.com. All right? Okay, as we are moving back into Sunday service, we're excited to share that Converge Kids is back. Yes, yes, we are very happy for that. We want to let you know that we are offering care for infants through fifth grade, and it's gonna be great. It's a wonderful worship experience. It's fun, it's engaging, and it is in a nurturing environment, but we need your help. If you would like childcare on Sunday mornings, we are asking that everyone please go online and RSVP. We have a childcare RSVP form, and you can find that on our webpage. Just go to the plan your visit section. You can register in advance for uh, several Sundays Days, just go out there, register, and we will save a place for you. All right? With that being said, we also want to share with you that our new membership class, Next Steps, will be taking place on Sunday, May 1st, immediately following worship. So if you are interested in learning more about Converge, learning more about our, our mission, our vision, our core values, and our culture, this class was designed with you in mind. If you want more information or if you would like to register, simply send us an email at admin at weareconverge and we will get the additional information to you and get you registered for class again Sunday, May 1st, immediately following the worship experience. Thank you guys. So we are now moving into our blessed life segment of our worship experience. Yes, I love it when people are excited about this portion. This is our opportunity to live out one of our values here at Converge, which is generosity. We say here at Converge that we do not live with a clenched fist. We prioritize living with an open hand. We prioritize generosity, not even just financially, but that's a part of it, guys. So if you want to 
take this journey with us in living generously, in being obedient to God's word to bring our tithes and offerings to his house, this is your opportunity. We have multiple ways that you can give. First, here in person, we do have ushers in the aisles with envelopes. If you need one, raise your hand. There may also be some on the back of your seats and we'll get those envelopes to you. We do ask that you fill out those envelopes in its entirety. I've got mine all filled out and ready to give. And we ask for that so that we can properly record an account for your giving. You can also give safely and securely online by visiting us at weareconverge.com forward slash give. You can give via text by texting Converge Give along with the dollar amount to 77977. And then you can give via our mobile app. All you need to do is search the iOS and the Android app stores for Church Converge Church Plano. Download it and you can give that way. Guys, we appreciate your generosity. We appreciate everything that you guys do to help move forward the vision and the mission that God has given us here at Converge. Let's just say a quick word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus and we thank you for this day which you have made. We make it a conscious choice to rejoice and to be glad in it, Father God. We even rejoice now in giving back to you a small portion of what you have blessed us with, Father. Thank you, Father God, for every seed sown into this house. It is sown into good ground, God. We pray, God, that the seed would multiply and that it would bring forth everything that you desire to accomplish here at Converge. We thank you for every family, every friend, every home, every person that has given and sown into this ministry, Father God. And we thank you for those that desire but are not able. We trust and believe that you are making a way for that, God. We love you. We magnify you. We glorify you. If not any other day, God, especially today. It is in Jesus' name that we thank you and we praise you. Amen. Thank you guys so much for your attention. Enjoy the rest of the worship experience.
this morning. So if the team would come back, I want them to sing that one more time. And I invite you, I invite you right where you are to join us in worship one more time as we sing this song. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you for your great love wherewith you've loved us. We thank you, God, for your mercy and grace. Lord, you did it all for us. You did it all for us. In fact, Lord, you did it all for me. You did it all for me. Thank you, God, for the demonstration of your great love. Not because we were perfect. Not because we did everything right. You still loved us. You still loved us. You still loved us. And it didn't end on the cross. It didn't end in the grave. Because three days later, Three days later, three days later, you rose with all power and all authority. So all together, one more time, Veronica's gonna lead us in the chorus of the song. And you know it, it simply says forever, forever you're glorified. Forever you are lifted high. Forever he is alive. Come on, Veronica.
of God. That's good news this morning. That is, in fact, the gospel. And you may be seated in the house of the Lord if you can. Listen, let me just set the record straight. If this is your first time with us, uh, we're a little bit radical about Jesus. We get more excited about Jesus than you get about your cowboys and your mavericks. And listen, there might be a moment in the service where we might get a little bit more undignified than this. And that's all right. Because we remember and we embrace and we celebrate all that Jesus did 2,000 years ago. Listen, I promised Pastor Wendy I would be on my best behavior. I don't know. I feel a little rebellion welling up in my spirit right about now. Amen. But I'm excited this morning because of everything this day represents. That 2,000 years ago, our Savior Jesus rose triumphantly from the grave. Once again, I'd like to welcome you to our Easter worship experience, and we're calling it Easter at Converge, Death Defeated. We're going to dive into the word momentarily, but I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge some very special friends uh, with us this morning, and I'm going to try to do this expeditiously so we can get to the word, but listen, I'm so honored uh, this morning uh, that all of you are here, first and foremost, but secondly, there's some very special people uh, with us. Uh, some of them are part of our online community all the way from Longview, y'all. Show your love for Jim and Jeannie Bartlett. They're here. All the way from Longview, y'all. All the way from Longview. Uh, I have another uh, a couple special guests uh, who are with us this morning. They're joining us from Dallas for the first time. And uh, if you've ever seen me rock that black hat, it, when I wore my hat, it blew up yeah. on social media. Uh, and my hatter, if I could call her that, is in the house. Uh, Dan Dana Vidal of Top Hats is with us. And, uh, and her hunk of burning love is also in the house. Will is in the house. We're so glad that you're here this morning. Uh, listen, my man, I call him Isomatic. Don Isom is in the house with his beautiful family. Natasha, Kaylin, and Leah are there in the house. Uh, my dude, Trey Smith, and his beautiful wife are also in the house. And uh, man, God is doing some amazing things in his life and, and uh, just working with uh, Sports Illustrated, I think it is, and, and some things that God is doing with ESPN. Uh, we're deeply deeply honored that you're here uh, with us uh, for the first time. And then uh, I want to take a moment before I dive into the word, because this is, this is critical uh, for us. One of the things that Andrea said was we live with a generous disposition here at Converge Church. We have two opportunities to do something very special and, and meet some needs uh, right here in our community. Just a few minutes away from us, a young family of five, husband and wife, three kids, uh, had a house fire. Uh, lost almost everything and we became aware of that and uh, they're in a hotel now and uh, and they reached out to us uh, we already going to do something for them this morning but we're asking you to prayerfully consider how you can partner with us so we can bless them real good bless them real good their little ones lost all their toys lost all their clothes uh, parents lost everything and so as a church we don't want to just be a church that gathers on Sunday morning that ignores the needs around us Monday through Saturday. So we invite you uh, over the next few days to consider a gift to that family. They've asked for gift cards. That would be the most practical thing for them. Uh, but uh, if you want to make a donation through Converge Church, uh, those of you who have our app, you can go to the app and just select benevolence. Select benevolence. And 100% of everything that comes in between now and next Sunday will go to that family so we can help restore them, especially their kids, to normalcy. Amen. Uh, second request I have this morning, and I know this is Easter Sunday, man. We're supposed to follow a tight script. Uh, but I've got to do this this morning. Uh, many of you have heard of what's happening in Ukraine. And, uh, and I want to make it really personal. I want to bring it home this morning because one of our charter members is Dima Bondarenko, uh, who is from Ukraine. His family have lived in the U.S. now, I think since the 90s. Dima is with us. And the reason Dima is with us this morning is because Dima has observed everything that's happening in his country. And Dima said, Pastor Ray, I can't stay here while my people are suffering. In fact, Dima's son, 
serves in the U.S. Army. And Dima reached out to me one morning and he said, Pastor Ray, I wanted, you, wanted a call to let you know that I'm going to the Ukraine. And I said, to do what? He said, I can't stay here in the U.S. in comfort while my brothers and sisters are suffering. He's leaving. In fact, he's a master mechanic for several years with BMW. He's leaving that. In fact, he left BMW, started his own master garage. And he said, I've got to go and do something. So we've been buying supplies uh, for him that he can take back uh, to help his people in the Ukraine. When we say as a church, we live with a generous disposition, with an open hand, not a clenched fist, it's not something we say, it's something we live. And so Dima, why don't you come? Why don't you come? Oh, nice. I like that. No stairs required. Dima and his family, man, charter members of Converge Church. And, uh, and Dima, Dima, when will you be leaving? When are you going? When? Yeah. It's like a couple of weeks. In a couple of weeks. Let's grab him a mic, one of the host mics. If we can. Dexter, can you grab that mic for me? So you're leaving in a couple of weeks. What can we do to help you while you're in Ukraine? Oh, hold, hold that thought. Let's grab the mic. Let's move quickly. Thank you. I know we're going to be praying for you, number one, but what else can we do as a church while you're there? What can we do for you? Just, I very appreciate uh, Pastor Ray inviting me here. And I'm not in the church probably a couple of years. And this is a good time. Just, it's, it's just 15 minutes take me for start talk to God and go back like normally how so, I feel yeah so let me tell you what Dima just said just in case you missed it yeah. Dima said it's been two years that he's been out of church yeah. but being in church this morning after 15 minutes of being in the house of God he prayed and he reconnected with God like he did <laughs> before his two-year hiatus from God. We're so glad you're here this morning. Thank this is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do. All right. Dima, I'm going to tell all your business, Dima. And his son, his son is usually with him, and his son kind of does some of the translation. But Dima, um, uh, um, I, I think I can say this. Uh, because I can't tell you all our business, but before Dima came to the U.S. and before he came to faith in Christ, he had a very unique set of skills. Some of y'all caught that. He had a very unique set of skills that he will be using when he returns to the Ukraine. Listen, I'm all about that. I'm a pastor, but I'm gangster too. And I also had the privilege of serving in the United States Army. Amen. So let's do this. Let's do this. We're already going to do something for Dima to make sure he goes loaded back to Ukraine with all the stuff that they need to serve and for him to stand with his brothers. But this is what we're also going to do. We're going to pray right now. Amen. Can we do that? Amen. And when you, when you think of it, just lift up a prayer for Dima Bondarenko. Lift up a prayer for Dima Bondarenko and the people of Ukraine. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We honor you and we thank you. We thank you that your word says in Exodus 15 that the Lord our God is a warrior. He is a man of war. And Lord, I thank you that there are seasons when you raise up Davids. You raise up Davids to confront the Goliaths in this world. Lord, I pray that that same grace and that same strength would rest upon Dima. That God, he has found a transcendent cause that he's willing not just to live for, but willing to die for. But God, we ask that you cover and protect him while he's gone. We pray Psalm 91 over Dima. That you will cover him and protect him and preserve him while he's gone from us. Use him for your glory. That when he's in the trenches, 
that when he's when his life is under threat that God you would be a shield and a refuge around him we trust you to do that now in Jesus name amen and amen come on let's show our love one more time for my friend our brother Dima Bondarenko love you man love you it will be all right it will be all right okay God bless you thank you amen amen all right I'm holding back the tears yeah I can't even look that way now amen Amen. All right. Let's dive into the word together. Are you ready? Yeah. Amen. 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 Turn with me in your Bibles, if you would, to John chapter number 11. That's where we lift our anchor text. Our anchor text this morning is lifted from John chapter number 11. We'll begin reading at verse number 1. I'm going to go fast and furious. You'll pray for your pastor. I'm going to try to do this in 20 minutes or less. I hear the chuckles. O ye of little faith. Oh, I'll do the intro in 20 minutes. <laughs> no, I'll be good. I'll be good this morning. I'll make sure I get y'all out of here in enough time to beat the Baptist to Lubies. Amen? Come on, somebody. Or the Methodist to Cracker Barrel. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. Amen. All right. John chapter 11, beginning at verse number 1. Listen, I'm grateful, y'all, for Good Friday. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I rejoice in the power and the victory and the triumph of Resurrection Sunday. Yeah. But the thoughts that I'm going to share with you this morning have to do with my fixation, not with the pain and the trauma of Good Friday, not with the victory of the resurrection on Sunday, but listen to me, y'all, the silence of Saturday. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about those moments in your life when you find yourself in the middle. Right. I'm talking about those moments in life when it seems like God is silent. Listen, I've lived long enough to know that just because God is silent, it doesn't mean he's absent. As the father of two kids, I know that when my kids are quiet, it means they're up to something. <laughs> Come on, that's good news this morning. Yeah. That when it seems that God is silent, he's actually up to something. And he's not just up to something, he's up to something good. Not only is he up to something good, he's up to something for your good and ultimately for his glory. Mm. John chapter 11 helps us understand the mind of God and the work of God when heaven seems silent and earth has no comfort to offer. That's the story of the, res of the resurrection. Because on that fateful day, after the disciples witnessed what they witnessed, they thought it was over. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but I don't know if you've ever been in a place where it seems like it was over. When Jesus gave up the ghost and said, it is finished, for those who saw that, it would have been very easy for them to say, well, we ran with him for three years. We followed him for three years. We thought it was going to turn out differently. It is what it is. Some of us stop in what might seem like the finality of Good Friday. But there's more. There's more beyond what you thought was dead. And the power of the resurrection this morning reminds us that just because it's dead doesn't mean it's over. 
if God is in it. I'll say that one more time. Just because it's dead doesn't mean it's over. In fact, a kernel of wheat must fall to the ground and die in order for it to produce much fruit. There are lessons, there are lessons in the resurrection that apply to our lives today. So here it is. I'm going to personalize the story because we're going to visit the home of two sisters and a brother named Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. And we're going to walk through this quickly by the grace of God. We're in John chapter 11, beginning at verse number one. It says, now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair and whose brother Lazarus was now sick. Notice what the writer is doing. He's establishing the fact that these three people that he introduces in the story are not just random actors in the story of God. It's not just some random Martha. It's not just some random Mary. It's not just some random Lazarus. But it identifies them specifically based on their history with Jesus. It says this is the same Mary that anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet. This is the same Martha who served Jesus faithfully whenever he came to Bethany. And now their brother Lazarus was sick. In fact, when you read the New Testament in the Gospels, you'll find that Jesus often came and stayed in the house of Mary and Martha and Lazarus. And as I read the text, I began to ask myself the question, if Jesus came to McKinney today, where would he stay? Where would he feel most welcome? Where would he be treated? As a VIP. Because this is not one random occurrence. Jesus has history in Bethany. And even more specifically, he has history with this family. The scripture is not talking about strangers. And what I find fascinating about the text, Luis, is the fact that even though they were friends of Jesus, even though they loved Jesus, trouble still came to their house. Mm. I'm talking about the power of the resurrection. And I'm talking about those moments in our lives when life doesn't seem to make sense. Have you ever had a friend who had uh, a lot of authority and a lot of power and a lot of influence? Uh, aren't you always proud when you say, oh, I know so-and-so because your relationship with them gives you special privileges and access? Uh, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus felt the same way. Oh, yeah, we know Jesus. He stays at our house when he comes to town. And in that moment, they believed that because of our relationship with Jesus, if we call upon him, oh, he's going to show up. Because we ain't strangers, we're friends. But notice what the text says. Verse 3, therefore, I love that word. It's connecting verses 1 and 2 to what he's about to say. Because they were his friends, notice what they did. The sister sent to him. Have you ever been in a season of need and you knew somebody who could help you out of it? And it made perfect sense. I'm just going to call him up. That's exactly what they're doing. Because it's like, we love Jesus and Jesus loves me. And notice what the text says in verse 3. Therefore the sister sent to him saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. Verse 4 says, when Jesus heard that, he said, 
This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus, notice verse 5, loved Martha and her sister Lazarus. Loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. But notice verse 6, so when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. Y'all see that? Jesus didn't move at their pace in the midst of their need and in the midst of their desperation. The scripture says not only did Jesus love Lazarus and not only did they love Jesus, the scripture says because Jesus loved him, he waited two more days. I don't know if you've ever been there when you've cried out to God in the midst of your circumstances and your situation and it seems like you had an emergency and he responded with zero urgency. And the Bible has the audacity to say that Jesus loved him? I don't know about you, but I don't want that kind of love. Isn't that what we would say? You love me. I've opened my heart to you and my home to you and my life to you. And here I am in my most desperate need and my most desperate circumstances. And the audacity to wait two more days while my situation gets worse and worse. Notice the text. Verse 6 again. So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, let us go to Judea again. And the disciples said to him, Rabbi, let's jump down to verse 12. Then the disciples said to him, Lord, if he sleeps well, if he sleeps, he will get well. Verse 13 says, however, Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought he was speaking speaking about taking rest in sleep. Verse 14 says, then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there, that you may believe. What if God's delays have more to do with what he wants to reveal to others? What if God's delays have more to do than the glory he wants to show others and not just relieve you in your pain? What if your pain in this moment is for somebody else's gain? Mm, We don't like that part. Listen to me. Just because God ain't speaking to you about your problem, doesn't mean he's not working on the solution. I've been guilty of that. I've been guilty of thinking that just because God wasn't speaking to me, that he had abandoned me in my struggle. But notice what Jesus said to the disciples. He says, this is going to be for my glory. And there will be moments and seasons in your life when life doesn't seem to make sense. When it seems like God is silent that heaven has nothing to say in response to you, but the delay is connected to something bigger that God wants to do. You see, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus would have been content with a miraculous healing when what God wanted was a resurrection. And what if the delay to the answer in your prayer is connected to something bigger much bigger that God wants to do that doesn't only impact you and yours, but impacts everybody who sees it. And notice the text. In fact, let me read this to you. Verse 4. Notice what Jesus said. He said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God that the Son of God may be glorified through it. You see, just because God's not talking to you about your situation doesn't mean he's not working on a solution. In fact, he already has worked out the solution because he knows the end from the beginning. Absolutely nothing about your life catches him off guard. Yeah. 
You know the moral of the story? Jesus loves you enough to wait. I'll say that again. Jesus loves you enough to wait. And that is counterintuitive for us who live in a microwave on demand culture. Do it now, do it my way, and do it on my terms. Yet in the story, we see that God loved them. And the scripture says that because he loved them, he waited. I wonder how many of us have given up on God prematurely because we waited too long. It seemed like we waited too long. And I've told Converge Church before, listen, if it seems like God has put you on hold, please don't hang up. As a pastor, I get calls all the time. And the trickiest thing is managing those calls. Because sometimes when I get a call, I'm on an important call, but I see another important call come on, and I start, I say, hey, man, give me one second. Let me take this. And before you know it, this other person has been on hold for three, four minutes, and eventually they hang up. And a lot of times, we do that with God. That's the situation that Lazarus can you imagine the disappointment they're experiencing? Yes. Yes. In fact, I believe that they said if he would do it for anybody, surely he would do it for us. Surely he would drop everything that he's doing for me. Because we got history with Jesus. Yet the scripture says because he loved them, he waited. And notice what happened. While he waited, the thing that they loved, the thing they cared for, died. It's one thing to say, listen to me, when it seems like God puts you on hold, don't hang up. But while you're waiting on God, while you're holding on to your dream, it dies while you're waiting on him? This is the power of the story of resurrection. It's not just the resurrection of Jesus, but it's this resurrection that this family is about to experience in their own lives. Here it is. Ah. Yeah, this is where I'm going to close. This is where I'm going to close. It's easy to think, it's easy to think that when something like this happens to us, to think God doesn't care. To resign to the fact that if God really cared, he would have responded in my time of need and he would have done it quickly. He wouldn't have hesitated. Yet the scripture says he loved them so he waited. I'm just going to read this to you, and then we'll, I'll be out of your way. What's the purpose of God waiting in my time of need? Why doesn't he hasten to my rescue? There is an old Jewish rabbinical proverb that says, the man who has not suffered, what can he know anyway? You see, the truth is, there's purpose in our pain. If we'll see it. If we'll see it. And it comes when we allow pain to be our platform, not our prison. Okay. If you've ever wondered if God cares, 
Notice heaven's response. When God saw our suffering, and this is the story of Jesus, when God saw our suffering, he had only one response, and his response was Jesus. God wrote himself into the story of human suffering. You know what that means? It means that God became the undercover boss. For those of you who have ever watched the show, for the CEOs who are completely disconnected from what's happening in their company, they have to assume this disguise. And they have to go undercover. And they have to become like one of their employees so they can understand what the experience is really like, not just go off of what is written in a manual. And God was in heaven. And he looked down upon your suffering and my suffering, and he became the undercover boss. He assumed humanity. He put upon himself human flesh. And he said, it's not enough for me to look down from heaven. I will experience what they experience. I will become like one of them, and I will suffer like they suffer. Because what good is it anyway? What good is a man who has never suffered? He became the undercover boss. If you ever wonder if God cares, consider the fact that he sent his son to die on your behalf. That's how much he cares. And not only did he send his son, he sent his son like a suffering servant. I don't know about you, but if I were God, I would send Jesus as a prince who was in charge of everything and telling people what to do. But he was born in Nazareth, and the testimony was of Nazareth. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? That's where Jesus was born. If you've ever wondered if God empathizes with your struggle, consider Jesus. So when he waits and he doesn't respond immediately to Lazarus and Martha and Mary, there are lessons while we wait. God wrote himself into the story of human suffering because in his life, how do we know that? In his life, Jesus suffered with us. He suffered with us. How did he suffer with us? Consider his birth. That after he was born, Herod commanded that every male child, two years old and younger, would be executed because he was trying to find Jesus. Look at his life and the things he suffered. Look at his earthly status. Look at his betrayal by Judas for 20 pieces of silver. The going rate for a Hebrew slave. If you've ever been betrayed by someone in your inner circle, Jesus knows because he suffered it himself. If you've ever been denied when the people you helped the most chose not to even identify with you like Peter did three times, I don't know that guy. If you've ever wondered if God cares about you, look at the life of Jesus because he suffered in every way that you and I have. And God did it so that he can let us know that he identifies with our pain. Number two, in his life, he suffered with us. In his death, listen, he suffered for us. Listen to this. Philip Yancey said, on the cross, God learned what it means to be God forsaken. Then Jesus cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And if you ever felt forsaken, Jesus knows what it means to be forsaken because on the cross, he assumed all of our sin. Everything that we deserved, he took upon himself. And for that moment, he was separated from God. Notice what John Stott said. John Stott said, I could never myself believe in God if it were not for the cross. Because in the real world of pain, how can one worship a God who was immune to it? 
The reason we can draw near to God this morning is because our God is not immune to pain. He suffered the same way you and I have. The good news is in his resurrection, Jesus defeated death on our behalf. And because Jesus defeated death on our behalf, his resurrection enables us to overcome our greatest fear. And his resurrection guarantees our eventual resurrection as well. That because Jesus rose, we too will rise again. Let me close the story in John chapter 11. Most of you know it. In verse 17, it says, so when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days, buried four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away, and many of the Jews had joined the women around Martha and Mary to com comfort them concerning their brother. Then Mary, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary was still sitting in the house. Y'all see those two responses? The one who in the midst of their disappointment still comes back to Jesus. And the one who in the midst of their disappointment with God stays right where they are. This morning, I believe that God wants to heal our disappointments. And the way he does that is through the power of the resurrection. Here's is where I close. And this, notice what Martha said in verse 21. And Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Verse 22, but even now I know, even now I know that whatever you ask of God, he will give you. That's faith even in the midst of our disappointments. That we can continue to trust God and say, even though the script didn't turn out the way I imagined it, even now, God can still give you what you ask. And notice the words of Jesus. Jesus says, your brother will rise. Verse 24, Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. But Jesus said, no, 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 no. Listen, baby. Listen, Martha. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And she said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ the Son of God who has come into the world. And you know how the story ends. Jesus comes into the cemetery. He tells them to roll away the stone, the thing that has been holding him confined, the thing that has been holding him in prison. Jesus said, remove the stone. And then he calls him out, Lazarus, come forth. I believe that God is calling some of us out. And he's not just calling us out in general, even though that is possible. He is calling us each out by name. He's calling you out by name. And he's saying, Lazarus, come forth. He's saying, Jesse, come forth. He's saying, Levi, come forth. He's saying, Dima, come forth. He's saying, Dexter and Andrea, come forth. Out of the things that have held you bound. Because Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. And because Jesus went to the cross, he defeated death so that we could live. And this is where I close. Is that my third closing or my fourth? Fourth. You were counting, Jim? Okay. This is my fourth and final close. Fourth and final. You can hold me to it. Because there are three kinds of people in this room right now. Three kinds of people listening to me. Number one, the first group are people who are not persuaded by what you just heard because of the pain you have observed and the pain you've suffered personally. There's some of you in this room right now who are struggling to even hear that, to even believe that God really cares because if he really did, he would have intervened when I thought he would. Uh, there's, a second, there's a second group that's listening to what I'm saying. 
And that second group of people are those who are persuaded that God loves you and that God cares about you for the first time. Maybe life has thrown you so many curveballs, so many disappointments. Maybe God hasn't shown up the way you thought he would, the way everyone said he should. But maybe this message, considering the fact that Jesus came and died and suffered so he could identify with our pain, for the first time you believe that God loves you. And then the third group, third and final group, are those who have been persuaded, but you've just forgotten. You've just forgotten how much God loves you. And maybe today God is reminding you of his great love for you. Can I pray for you this morning? Whether you're in group one, two, or three, Jesus defeated death for you. So if the disappointments of life have been too overwhelming for you to even hear what I have to say, I want to pray for you. If you're convinced for the first time that God loves you because he became the undercover boss just for you, I'm praying for you as well. And if you're here this morning and you say, like Dima said, like Dima said, I've been out of church two years. But as soon as I came in and prayed, I was right back where I used to be with God. Maybe that's you this morning. I want to pray for you. With every head bowed and every eye closed, <clears throat> Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. We thank you for the power of the resurrection. We thank you, Lord, for the pain of Good Friday, but we thank you for the power of the resurrection. But Lord, we also consider the silence of Saturday, the moments in our lives when we don't know what you're doing, what you're up to, when we're confused, when we're disillusioned, when we feel alone, when we feel like we've been abandoned, and we say, God, where are you? Father, I pray, just as you showed yourself faithful and strong, to Mary, to Martha and their brother Lazarus. Not the way they wanted it to happen, but the way you designed it sovereignly. I pray, God, that you will do it for each one in this room. For the one who says, I've suffered too much to believe that God loves me, I pray, God, in the days to come, you will reveal yourself and that you would write yourself into their story and that they will know firsthand how much you love them. For the one who is convinced for the first time, I pray, God, in Jesus' name, that they will walk with you, not just in this moment, but daily. And for the one, Father, who has forgotten your love, but who has been reminded of it today, I thank you, Lord, for a fresh start, for a new beginning, in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen and amen. Did that help anybody this morning? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Listen, if you fit into any of those three categories that I mentioned, we have some resources for you. In fact, immediately following the worship experience, if you go out to the lobby, we have some journals, the, the Gospel of Luke, and we have some other resources that we want to put in your hands that will help you jumpstart your walk with the Lord. Also, if you have some questions about faith, or if you need a, a, a free Bible, you may not have a Bible and you need a Bible, or you need some resources to help you understand what it means to be a devoted Christ follower, send us an email to echurch at weareconverge.com. That email again is echurch at weareconverge.com. Our team will send you those resources and will help you jumpstart your relationship with Jesus. Amen? Amen. Why don't you stand with us? Uh, I want to make this, uh, make you aware of this. We do have a photographer because uh, all of you came in your Sunday best. Come on, y'all look amazing. If you want to capture this moment and uh, to commemorate this moment, uh, just make your way out to the lobby and hang right. There's a backdrop. The photographer will be there. We want to get a picture of you and your family, and we will send you a link where you can download that picture and add it to your Easter memories and your Easter traditions. Uh, once again, thank you so much for being a part of Easter at Converge and for celebrating the fact 
that 2,000 years ago, Jesus defeated death on our behalf. Coquetzo, why don't you come? Amen, amen. Was that a blessing? Converge, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I hope that spoke to you. He is risen. Our Lord is alive. Um, with hands lifted up to heaven, I would like to say a blessing to everybody and we will be dismissed. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance towards you and give you peace. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Enjoy. If you were impacted by today's worship experience, we would love to hear from you. Maybe today's sermon was exactly what you needed to hear, or you prayed the prayer of salvation for the first time. If so, we would love to send you some materials to help you kickstart your relationship with God. Or if you would like more information on how to join our virtual family, email us at echurch at weareconverged.com. If you'd like to partner with us financially, you can do so online safely and securely at www.weareconverged.com slash give. You can also give by texting 77977 and send Converge Give in the dollar amount. You can also find all of this information on our mobile app. Simply open your app or Play Store, search Converge Church Plano, and download the app. It's that easy. Thank you again for joining today's worship experience. We look forward to staying connected with you.